Hi, my name is Graylin, and I'm an experimental media artist from Philadelphia. I perform live visuals and music under the name Television Sky, and I am also a member of Black Patches. So I have been working with uh, modular synthesizers for roughly four or five years now. And when I first started, it was very difficult for me to figure out how to build a system. The learning curve is really high and the investment is really high. I started working primarily with video synthesizers first and found my way into the audio stuff a little bit later. Uh, I had been working with uh, musicians and performing artists, uh, doing live visuals, uh, using programs like VDMX and Resolume uh, and sometimes Mad Mapper for doing live projection mapping. But as I was doing those live performances, I felt uh, a disconnect to the visuals to be able to manipulate them live. Even though I had the, the MIDI controllers, uh, I wanted to be able to perform in the way that a musician would perform with a live instrument. And, and so uh, I, I had done some research and kind of stumbled upon these LZX systems uh, for creating live uh, visuals and uh, when I first started I will say it was it was very difficult the learning curve was really high and uh, and every time I would purchase a new module it would sort of open up um, even more questions about you know how to use it and and more importantly like what next right what what should I buy next after I figure this module out uh, and so today I just want to walk you through my setup primarily for doing visuals um, and hopefully that will uh, give you give you some insight or or spark some some um, some creative ideas on how to build your system. So whether you are starting off new or already uh, working with modules, I, I think that question of what next always comes up. Like what what should I get next? And there's so many options out there. There 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 is always the latest new module, but uh, you don't always need the latest new new piece. Uh, and I think. The most important thing to really consider is what it, what is your workflow? What do you what would you like your workflow to be? And for me personally, in working with visuals, I was really trying to figure out a way to bridge the gap between an analog modular system and my digital system and software uh, to get them communicating together. Not just for recording, but also for manipulating and live performance. Uh, and so I'm going to walk you through my setup. So this video is not going to walk you step by step on how to patch something specific with the uh, modular video synthesizer uh, but I will show you something that I patched already I'll, I'll give you a really brief walkthrough of what's going on here uh, uh, but more importantly I just want to uh, show you my workflow of how all of all of this analog stuff is connected to the digital stuff so I usually like to start with the video synthesizer first. Uh, that way I don't have to open up the computer. I, I really like to get my hands in here and, and start to patch and manipulate some things uh, as, as almost a, a rough sketch at the very beginning. Uh, and then I, I, I will move on and, and start to process some of this further in the computer digitally uh, using like VDMX or, or other software. Uh, so I'm not going to walk you through step by step on how I patch this particularly, uh, but uh, I just put this together just to have something to, to show. Uh, but just a little bit of background, right? With a, with a video synthesizer, you have the ability to, to create either two-dimensional or three-dimensional shapes uh, and manipulate them, manipulate the color, manipulate the motion in some way. Uh, what I've done here is started with a really basic uh, shape, which is like a diamond shape, and that came out of the visual cortex. So the one thing I will tell you about video synthesis, especially if you're using the LZX systems, uh, you do have to have a module, you have to have some sort of brain module here, uh, which b basically um, allows you to create shapes or bring in video feeds and also uh, get things out of the module, module uh, into something else. So if you, if you wanted to pass it onto a projector or uh, into the computer for more processing, you need uh, some sort of module that's going to allow for all of that. Uh, this also sort of syncs everything together. So the visual cortex, which I believe uh, is no longer being made, you can still find them used. Uh, and I, I believe uh, LZX is in the process of developing or maybe just finished developing their next generation uh, of video modules. So so keep an eye out. There's going to be something different replacing the, the visual cortex. Um, I, I haven't, you know, been looking recently, so I don't know what's going on right now. But again, this is no longer being made, but you can still find them. 
Um, but again, you have to start here if you're working with, with video because you need a way to be able to uh, either create some sort of shape or bring in video feeds or take video feeds out of your system. And so what's happening here is I have this shape coming out. Uh, it's going through a particular module. Uh, this is a, a utility basically that allows you to take a signal and, and, and duplicate it or, or multiply it really. Uh, it's called a mult or multiple. And you can send the signal to multiple different locations throughout. And so I'm taking this sort of, I started with a really basic diamond shape. It's coming out here and it's being processed through an edge processor, uh, which helps to add some uh, some depth to the edges uh, of, a, of a shape. And then it goes through a keyer, uh, which uh, again, every time it sort of goes to another one of these effects, it, it adds another sort of layer of depth uh, and makes it a bit more 3D. Uh, and, and so it's passing through there. And then some of the motion that you're seeing uh, is being created or generated by the prismatic rays, which acts uh, basically like LFOs uh, and an LFO it allows you to, to basically manipulate or modulate something different. Um, and so very common in audio modulars, you're using LFOs to modulate another sound to add, again, another layer of depth or interest in that particular sound or some sort of motion or movement throughout the sound. Where with video, you're using these, these sort of LFOs to add some, some visual movement to something. And so all, all of this sort of waving that's happening in this particular shape is happening as a result of... Uh, these prismatic rays, these LFOs affecting them in some way. And I can, I can adjust the speed, I can adjust a lot of things um, from here and, and, uh, and timing of, of, of those shapes. If you are just getting started with video stuff, you know, a lot of these things won't make sense. You really have to dive in and play with them. I've been working with this stuff for, for almost five years and I'm still learning things about, you know, how this process really works. So, uh, and, you know, and, and for me, that's the sort of fun part of all of this. So this is my basic setup here. Now, obviously, when you're when you're building out a system, you have to think about a case. Um, uh, one thing to know about video modules is that they really do use a lot of power. Uh, so you need something that will give you enough power to you know to 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 really keep these things happy. If your case doesn't put out enough power, you will start to have some issues. I've seen some issues with some other cases that I had where certain modules wouldn't fire up uh, or. Um, any noise, if you have a noisy uh, power bus, uh, that, that noise may translate into something visual where you'll, where you'll see the actual noise show up in your video. And, and sometimes that might be interesting, but you may not always want that. And so uh, you wanna think about a case that, uh, that really gives you enough power. Um, you can use a, a site like Modular Grid or something like that to really figure out how much power your modules are gonna draw to give you an idea of what type of case you're gonna need. Um, you know, and I'll always think about later, right? You, I'm gonna, assuming that you may add to your system, so buy a case that you know you can you can grow into um, in the beginning. So so yeah, so this is my system again. All LZX modules. There are, there's a you know there are some other companies doing video stuff. Um, I started here and I just sort of stuck with this uh, you know particular um, setup. Uh, some other things that you may want to uh, consider too is how. Do I want to get video into the system and how do I want to take it out of the system? Uh, now, bringing video out, I'm using this Blackmagic Shuttle Pro Extreme. Um, I think that's the name. It's a Blackmagic Shuttle Pro, I think is the name. Uh, this, is, this is actually discontinued, uh, but you can still find these things out there. This is just a video capture card. It's all it is. And so coming out of my system, I'm, I'm coming out component cables into this device and then out into my computer through a uh, Thunderbolt cable. Uh, it's a really simple, and there's some software at the other end that will capture any video coming out. There's a scaler, there's a built-in scaler, so I can scale this up to HD if I wanted to, or or leave it in the standard def uh, format that, that the, the video modular uh, works with. So bringing video out, now I can also use this to bring video in if I wanted to. If you, if you notice here, it's got a n number of uh, inputs, ins and outs, so you can see here it's got uh, both composite and component, and um, S-Video and HDMI ins and outs so you can use this to bring video in or bring video out of the of the modular um, uh, but I actually so I use I use this to bring video out and I'm using this particular piece for uh, inputting video usually uh, off an iPad so any video that I shoot that I want to run through the system I will put it on an iPad and send it out via HDMI and this little converter box will convert HDMI to component so that I can bring those into the system and process this way. 
Uh, I don't remember the brand here. I, I bought this a while back. Uh, but you know, if you just do a search for HDMI to component converter, there there are so many of them out there. Uh, what you know, you, you'll be able to find one. Um, there are some really good ones uh, from Blackmagic. Again, Blackmagic is uh, Blackmagic is the same company that makes this particular piece. Uh, smaller converters that, that you may, you can also buy to do some similar conversions. So, um, but but you want to think about that again. What is your workflow? Uh, how do I want to bring live video feeds in or take them out? Uh, if you have an old ca uh, an old camera. Uh, like a mini DV camera or something from the 90s uh, or anything older, you can actually plug a camera feed directly into the visual cortex as well. That is another way to do it. Um, I don't typically use a camera to bring video feeds in because uh, for my workflow, it's usually videos that I have created or shot uh, on a newer camera. So I, I just, again, run them through an iPad and uh, out HDMI in this way. But you can actually connect. Um, if you look for old surveillance cameras, and old cameras that that uh, that use uh, composite or component uh, cables, you you can plug directly in and bring a video feed straight into this. Uh, so again, um, not a step by step through my system, but some things to consider. You need a case that that gives you enough power. Uh, you need a a uh, a module that's going to help uh, really run the whole system. So the visual cortex is what I use to bring video signals in, take them out. Um, any shapes that I generate here run through my, run out of the visual cortex through my system and then back into the visual cortex again. So this is the most important thing. This is where you want to start. Uh, and then you can start to add on. Uh, just also, I use this little liquid TV module. This is also an LZX piece. This is actually very nice to have if you are doing a live show and you just want to preview what's going on here especially if you're someplace where you can't see the screen or maybe you want to try out a couple things uh, and not actually send those out of your system. You can also use this as a preview monitor as well. So you can just see, kind of monitor what's going on in your patch. So once I get everything from the LZX plugged into the Blackmagic uh, capture device, uh, I pull everything into VDMX, which is a software designed for live uh, visual performances and, and video processing. Um, I've been using this program for quite some time uh, on its own, even before the, the modular, um, and using this with a, with a, a MIDI controller. Uh, but now what I'm doing is bringing in the LZX video feed through the Shuttle Pro capture device uh, and into a channel in, in, in VDMX. Um, and I like this program quite a bit because it's, it's like, like a, 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 an actual modular synthesizer. This piece of software is very modular in itself. It allows you to really build out an interface uh, in the way that you need for, for whatever workflow you need for performance. Uh, so each one of these little panels can be sort of built out from scratch at the beginning. I believe this is a Mac-only program but there's also uh, other programs like like Resolume, which do very similar things. Uh, but again, I like the flexibility of, of VDMX. Uh, and so as you can see here, the video feed that that we saw on the, the LZX is coming in as one single channel through VDMX. And from here, I, I actually have a MIDI controller that allows me to, to, to sort of fade in or fade out. You can see this is the, uh, the final mix. Uh, and then I have some other elements plugged in here uh, as well. And so uh, you can bring in pre-recorded video or uh, you can manipulate some generative shapes uh, from right within VDMX. There's, there's a lot of flexible ways that you can work with VDMX, but basically each, each one of these strips is like a video channel that I can mix together uh, and they're all summed here. And then I can apply effects to each individual channel or I can apply effects uh, at the very end uh, before it's output it to a to a projector or wherever else, uh, and so this is the raw feed coming through here. Um, I, you know, if I wanted to start to apply some effects, I can do that. And every effect that you apply has uh, individual control, so you can really go through. And these are all mappable uh, to a MIDI controller, so I can I can control these physically, uh, or I can use a sound source to to manipulate these pieces as well. And so I can bring in uh, audio from an audio interface and have, have all of these buttons and sliders react uh, to the audio pieces.
And so as you can see, we, you know, we, we sort of started from this. And now we're starting to end here. And I could go back to the modular and start to repatch a little bit to, to make some adjustments, uh, you know, to, to what's coming in here. And so this just really does open up a world of possibilities to, to take what was created from the modular, bring that into the software, process it here, uh, and then send this out to a projector. Or I can even record this output uh, and use this, this video uh, standalone and bring it back through VDMX again or send this back out to the, to the modular. Uh, also, if I wanted to, so it's very flexible uh, in, in in this workflow. And again, it doesn't have to be this particular piece of software. There are other programs that you can use to to process video even further. Uh, you can even bring it into to a traditional video editor like like uh, Premiere or something, and and work on um, processing that video uh, and and then output it to something different as well. So the last thing I wanted to say is when you are building a system. Uh, whether it's video or, or audio, really take the time to learn each module one by one before you purchase anything new. Uh, I made the mistake of buying too many modules in the beginning and it made the process of learning everything way more daunting. Uh, in fact, in the end, I, I, I ended up selling a bunch of modules because I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, so really take the time, learn each one, learn what they do well, learn what some of the weaknesses are, really think about your workflow specifically uh, and how, how you want your setup to be uh, before you, you move on to, to make any new purchases. Uh, so yeah, um, hopefully this was all helpful and uh, thanks a lot for, for checking it out.